Mm-hmm. Next up, we have a heavyweight clash at 265 pounds between the Brazilian fighter Augusto Sokai and Sergei Spivak, who's from Moldova. Spivak goes by the Polar Bear. He's 14-3 overall, 4-1 his last five fights. A big favorite in this spot at minus 260, 27 years old, 6'3 in high with a 78-inch reach. And he trains out of a gym called Polar Bear Team. Not sure what the affiliation is there, but he also goes by the Polar Bear. Nonetheless, Agoto Sakai, 15-4-1 overall. 2-3 in his last five fights, a bit of a rough stretch. He's a dog here at plus 200 to plus 220 out of Piranha, Brazil. 31 years old, about four years older than Sergei Spivak. 6-3, both guys are six foot three, same height. 77-inch reach for Augusto Sakai, 78 inches for Sergei Spivak, only a one-inch difference. And for Augusto Sakai, he trains out of Gal Ribeiro team, a very good gym down in Brazil. As for the votes coming in on Tapology, Spivak is a huge favorite, getting 88% of the votes. I agree, I like Spivak as well. A little surprised at the only 12% coming in for Sakai, though. It is a heavyweight battle. Anything's possible. And Spivak, for the wins he has had, it's been against lower-level guys. He's had his moments. Yes, he has the win over Tai Tuivasa. We'll talk about that fight, of course. But overall, I haven't seen a lot from Spivak where I look at this money line and say to myself, I want to plow it. I want to parlay with confidence. I don't have that type of confidence. We're going to find a few spots here we could play, maybe some prop bets that will be attractive to us. But just outright, I like Spivak to win. Just don't know how I want to play the money line. Now, looking at the striking stats in these two fighters, Sakai is landing 5.04 per minute. That's good volume for a heavyweight, absorbing 4.09, has a positive striking ratio. For Spivak, a little less volume, landing 3.79 per minute, absorbing 3.22. Both guys have a positive striking ratio. Now, for takedown offense, here's where Sergei Spivak separates himself from Sakai. Sakai is averaging 0.14 takedowns per 15 minutes, pretty much no takedowns per fight. And then you've got 3.29 takedowns per 15 minutes for Spivak. For takedown defense, 68% for Sakai. That'll be tested in this fight. And 70% for Sergei Spivak. Now, going in the background on these two fighters, let's look here first at Augusto, Augusto Sakai. Excuse me. From Brazil, went professional in 2011, so been a pro for about 11 years. He fought in Bellator, part of the UFC. He earned his UFC contract via the Dana White Contender Series, which is going on right now. He fought on that in 2018, four years ago. Got a round two KO win to earn his contract. He won his UFC debut via a round three TKO over Chase Sherman. What a nice guy to go up against in his UFC debut. Now, Chase Sherman was cut, kind of, but now he's back in the scene. His last opponent, Augusto Sakai, that is, he fought against Tai Tuivasa, and that was a tough one. Yeah, he got starched. It was a highlight moment. The highlights were all over ESPN. He got folded up like a a suitcase. And, of course, Tai Tuivasa has been, he's the flavor of the month, right? He's the new, new guy on the block. That was back in December of last year. It feels like it was this year. But it was actually almost about seven, eight months ago. So nasty knockout. He's taken the right amount of time to recover and come back for this fight. He also fought Jarzinho Rosenstrike last year. Unfortunately, lost that fight as well by a knockout in round one. Coming off of back-to-back round one, round two knockouts. Now, going back about two years, Alistair wrote Overeem, one of Overeem's last fight in the UFC. They went five full rounds. and In round five, he got finished with 20, 26 seconds in round five. Round five, five round fight, heavyweight fight, you know, not too much to make from it. But when you put it together, three losses in a row for Sakai and all three by finish. The guy had like a almost a 20 fight career before this and had never been finished. I think 18 fights to be specific, but 18 mixed martial arts fights had never been finished. And now his last three fights get, getting finished. Clearly that's a sign, a trend going in, in the wrong direction. Now good for him. He's fighting against Sergey Spivak, who's not known for being the heaviest puncher. He's got some finishing ability. Good ground strikes. He'll grind you on the ground like he did to Greg Hardy. He'll choke you out. Good submission ability. But he's not quite the banger as a Jarzinho Rosen strike or tied to a boss or even Overeem when he decides to start swinging. So when you look at the tapology here for Gustav Sakai, it's a bit concerning. There's a lot of red there. He's taken a lot of of L's recently. Now going back a little further for Sakai, he had a split decision win over Blagoy Ivanov and a split decision win over Andre Arlovsky. I'm being picky here, but going to split decision wins with those kind of guys... This is not Andre Arlovsky 1.0 when he was a champion back in the day. This is a guy who's just going in there to fight a few rounds, spar, and he barely gets by with a win there. And the same thing with Ivanov. Those, to me, are more concerning than like getting knocked out by Tai Tuivasa or in the Jarzino Rosenstrike fight where he did hurt Rosenstrike and then eventually Rosenstrike hurt him. My point is this. These close calls against fighters that should be much lower than him in terms of their caliber, it seems to me like that's the caliber he's at. So Sakai is much more like a Blagoy Ivanov, Andre Orlovsky at this point in his career, and not really at the point where even Spivak is at. Now, what's to like about Augusto Sakai? He has KO power in his hand, no question. That's his his best weapon, his KO power. He's also got pretty good footwork. He's light in his feet. He'll circle if his opponent pressures him. He has no problem. He has no problem depending on his footwork and circling. 
He's got okay striking defense. Obviously, his numbers show he's got a positive striking ratio. It's okay. But when Tai Tuivasa, for example, jumped on him last fight, his stand-up defense wasn't that great. It just wasn't uh, It wasn't good enough, put it that way. And he does do a great job in the clinch. I'm talking about Augusta Sakai, that is. In the clinch, heavy knees. He could hurt his opponent that way. I could see him getting it finished that way because his knees are heavy. He's a big guy. Does a good job of landing those in the clinch. He did it against Tai Tuivasa, but Tai Tuivasa is a mutant and didn't really affect him that much. Or maybe it affected him, but he didn't show it. Now, what are my concerns for Sakai? Serious durability issues. We mentioned it before. His last three fights, he's gone and been finished. You don't love seeing that, especially a guy who had not been finished before over the course of his career. He's also got a decision against some lower, below average fighters. We talked about that. It takes him also some time to get going. Look at the last fight, for example, against um, Sakai. He doesn't really mix it up. It gets finished. I'm sorry, not Sakai. The last fight against Taito Ivasa. He gets finished in round two. But you hear the commentators in round one saying he's not mixing it up. He's not getting involved. He's circling. He's being almost too patient. Low volume guys, any, any division, girl, guy, when they're low volume and don't have that like instinct to get into it and fight, it's always tough to bet in those type of people. They're going to leave you hanging with a ticket and you're going to be saying to yourself, you could have won the fight. You just didn't push the pace, didn't go forward. So he does do that at times. He has little to no ground attack, no ground offense, no ground defense. When it comes to the ground, that's just not part of his game. And that, to me, is going to be a big part of the question mark here for Sergey Spivak. Will he be able to explore the ground game? Will he be able to exploit the opportunities there? I'm going to say yes, absolutely. For Sakai, he knows that. He knows it's coming. He's going to have to be working on that in his camp. Now, speaking of the Moldovan fighter, Sergey Spivak, he was born in Moldova, the former WWFC heavyweight champion. That sounds good, right? WWFC heavyweight champion. Let me let that marinate for a second because he fought a guy named Travis Fulton for that title. Does that ring a bell? No, it doesn't ring a bell. We'll come back to that. He made his USC debut 2019 with a round one TKO loss to Walt Harris. Is Walt Harris even on the roster anymore? Not sure. Maybe he is, but uh, not a great debut there for him. He's married, has a daughter. He's a family man. His last fight was against Greg Hardy, who has since been cut. He was a minus 190 favorite that spot. Looking back now, he wins that fight round one via TKO, just rolls through Greg Hardy. That minus 190 line, a lot of value there. I didn't have that kind of confidence back when he had the fight. Nonetheless, takes care of Greg Hardy, who has ended up being a bust in the UFC a bust as an athlete, a bust as a person. We can go talk about that for hours. His prior fight, Tom Aspinall, last year, round one KO loss. He came in as a plus 195 underdog. Tom Aspinall, in that time, that time of his you know career, was like a lightning rod. This little injury he had, just a little bit of blip on the radar, nothing, no big deal. But Aspinall is a lightning rod, doing great in the heavyweight division. And quite frankly, if these guys fought 10 times, Sergey Spivak and Aspinall, I think... Aspinall win that fight eight to nine out of the 10 times. He's just that much better of a overall headweight, just a much better of an athlete. Now, going back a little further, 2019, Sergey Spivak fought Tai Tuivasa and he beat him via a round two submission. Not something like fluky, not some kind of a weird injury. He submits him. He fought a really good fight, a smart fight. If he fights that kind of fight on Saturday versus Augusto Sakai, I think he gets the win. Well, obviously he fights that kind of fight. He gets a submission, he's gonna get the win. You get my point. If he fights that type of game plan, number one, take these big guys to round two, round three. Sergey Spivak is not a heavy set guy. He makes the weight, yes, but he's a bit leaner for heavyweights, and he's also got some athleticism to him. He could fight into round two, round three. Take your time. Drag this guy to round two, round three. That's part of the path to victory. And so in the fight here against Tai Tuivasa in 2019, he gets the fight to round two. He was a plus 320 underdog, by the way, plus 320 in cash that night. He took, he took down Tai Tuivasa, I think, six times alone in round one. Yeah, six times. Now, Tai Tuivasa obviously got up five or six times and was able to get back to the feet. But six takedowns in round one. Round two, they come out. Tuivasa is a little bit more tired. And, of course, Sergey Spivak goes back to the well, takes down Tuivasa again. Now, Tuivasa cannot get back up. He cuts open Tuivasa and gets a nice head, arm, triangle choke. Actually puts out Tuivasa briefly for a moment. Tuivasa comes back to it. A nice quality win, a win that's even aging better. The issues are when you look back at that win, you have to acknowledge that Taito Avasa has improved. He's gotten better. If he were to fight him again, I think Taito Avasa would do a better job and maybe would actually win that fight. But in that moment, three years ago, Sergey Spivak looked pretty good and showed you what he's capable of. Now, some prior fights, some that, some that also raised some red flags. He fought another old fighter, like, for example, 
Uh, our buddy here, Sakai, fought old ass um, Arlovsky. Well, Sergey Spivak fought old ass Alexei Olenek. And it went to decision. He won the fight by decision. This, this is tough for me. Looking at a young heavyweight prospect going to full decisions with 40 something year old men, to me, there's a bunch of bells and whistles that go off, like finishing ability, the urgency. Um, you know, are you a legit top five, top 10 prospect if you can't take out the garbage? These guys are older, they're on the verge of retiring. So don't love that. That was just last year. 2021 had a round two TK win over Jared Vandera. That's what you should be doing with Jared Vandera. He fought Carlos Felipe 2020, two years ago, and it went to decision. Yeah, another example, Carlos Felipe, Alexei Olenek. Why are you going to decision with these guys, Sergey? He fought Marcin Tyburo. They both fought Marcin Tyburo, actually. Now he lost, I'm talking about Sergey Spivak. He lost by decision to Marcin Tyburo, but I believe Sakai beat Tyburo by a decision. Again, look at these guys, heavyweights, all going to decision, very questionable. Of course, he lost his debut to Walt Harris 2019 via KO in round one. And then Travis Fulton, 2017. And that was the fight Sergey Spivak won to become the WWFC heavyweight champion. Well, if you don't know who Travis Fulton is, do yourself a favor, jump on the Twitter spaces, wherever you look up your video stuff. Our boy Cody Saptic up at Dogger Pass up north in Canada, he did uh, something called what's called Mixed Martial Madness, where he does these outside the you know lines type of thing investigative reporting, did a whole thing on this guy, Travis Fulton. Travis Fulton has a record of 257 wins, 55 losses, and 10 ties. This was the guy that Sergey Spivak fought in 2017, just about five years ago. One via round one rear naked choke. If you go back and watch the film, the link's down below. Travis Fulton, who is notorious, notorious for basically organizing fights, kind of, you know, playing out fights, throwing fights, however you want to put it, you know, Bottom line is this, he's worked a bunch of fights. I love the video that Cody did. He goes over a full background. It's very, you know, in-depth, dramatic. That's who Travis Fulton is. When I saw this name pop up on Tapology, I said to myself, how in the world was this guy fighting a current now UFC heavyweight just that recently? But nonetheless, he did. So that's Travis Fulton. That was the WWFC heavyweight championship bout that Sergey Spivak won his title. Dare I say a very hollow title, <laughs> considering the background of Travis Fulton. All right, moving forward here. So for the Moldovan fighter, what do I like about him? He's a very good wrestler. And especially for the heavyweight division, most of the time you get a lack of wrestling in this division. And most people don't want to see it anyway. They want to see fighting, you know, on the feet, knockouts, whatever. But I will say this, Sergey on the ground can be dangerous. He could be nasty in top position. He could find finishes that way, a la his last fight against Greg Hardy. He had what, six, seven takedowns in the first round of his last fight or against the fight against uh, Sakai. I mean, Sagai, I keep mixing up the names, against Ty Tuavas when they fought. So you can expect him to attack the ground game. He's also got some finishing ability on the ground. He's got some submission wins. He's nasty, arm triangle chokes, rear naked chokes, obviously. I expect him to chase some submissions if he can get Sakai to the ground and get himself comfortable. He's also very light in the feet. We talked about it before. One of the more athletic heavyweights. He can circle, he'll, he'll bounce for the most of the first two rounds. You do see him hit some cardio walls at some point. He has to be careful with that. Don't overthrow, don't overcommit. You know the guys who try too much wrestling, they tire themselves out, has to be careful of that too. Though I will say he tends to set up his takedowns very well. So it's not as grueling of a takedown process, a little bit easier and swifter, especially again, when you look back at the fight against um, Tuivasa, excuse me. Now, what are my concerns for Sergey Spivak? Durability concerns. He's been KO'd in two of his last three losses. I mean, it happens, it's heavyweight division, but still there might be some concerns there about his chin. He goes to decision at a very high rate. And he, you know what he's doing? He's playing with his food. He's playing down to the competition. Instead of putting away older fighters or guys he's better than, he's going to distance with guys like Carlos Philippe and guys like um, Ales 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 Alesnik. He should be putting these guys away. Instead, you know, he's playing with his food. He tends to, like I said, fight down to the competition. He has trouble whenever he takes a step up in competition, i.e. Tom Aspinall. Granted, that's a big step up in competition, but he got roasted in that fight, or routed, however you want to put it. So when he's fighting middling of the road type of guys, Carlos Felipe, you know, older guys like Orlovsky, whatever else, he tends to find himself on top by decision, by submission. This fight's a big fight for Sergey Spivak. It's one of the most important fights of his career to dictate where he goes from here. And of course, for Augusto Sakai, it's pretty damn important too. I mean, maybe a bad loss here, like a knockout loss, four knockout losses in a row when he gets the ax and gets let go by the UFC. The UFC needs heavyweights. They like international heavyweights, especially not that they need any more fighters from Brazil, 
But it's an important fight for both fighters. And as Sergey Spivak, I believe on his best day, comes out here, really applies himself, should win the fight. Should. It's heavyweight. The fights we watched right on this film, we watched Spivak versus Hardy from this year, Spivak versus Fulton from five years ago, just five years ago that Fulton fight happened. Spivak versus Tuivasa from 2019. Spivak versus, I'm sorry, Sakai versus Rosenstrike from 2021. And then Sakai versus Tuivasa from earlier this year. If you want to watch any one of those five fights as part of our free video library, just take a look down below here on YouTube. You'll see those five links available in our description. My final few thoughts in this fight. Experience-wise, you know, very similar. These guys have fought a similar amount of fights. You got 15, 4, and 1 compared to 14 and 3. Fighter IQ, I think we're in the same wheelhouse. Both guys know what they're good at. They've got decent chins over the course of most of their career. Of course, recently... They got some questions, but they could take a few punches. It's not a, like a one punch will knock these guys out. Like in the case of Augusto Sakai, it wasn't one punch. He got into an exchange with some tough guys and got finished. It happens. Cardio, you know, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I want to edge the younger fighter in Spivak, who's 27, only four years younger. But he has moments that make me concerned too. Augusto Sakai, don't get it twisted. He's a heavier set heavyweight. But the guy's got pretty good cardio, too, and will circle. So from when it comes to cardio, I think these guys both check out. I see there could be a way these, these fights go the full distance. I can see that happening. Finishing ability, they both have it. They're heavyweights, about equal in terms of the finishing department. When it comes to striking, you know, I think Sakai has maybe better technique than Speedvok, but volume is the issue. Got to have more volume. And the last category to talk about is the grappling. Who's better on the ground? Who's the better sh grappler, jiu-jitsu guy, wrestling? That's where the fight will be won for Sergey Spivak. If he wins the fight, it's ground control, it's grappling, it's finding a submission. The fight not going the distance is minus 200. I do like that prop. But I also like the fight going over a round and a half at minus 130. Imagine if Spivak is on the ground, ground control, even just landing strikes, but Sakai ties him up, we melt the clock, and we at least get into round two. So I like the over one and a half prop. The submission prop for Sergey Spivak is not out yet. If it was out, I would offer you the number. It's not out yet. The TKO prop for Augusto Sakai, that too is not out. But I do like those two props to consider. The round three finish prop for Sergey Spivak, that's any kind of finish in round three. I would also take a look at that as well because you can imagine the fight gets late. I think Spivak will have a slight edge in cardio. He can find himself a late submission. The decision prop for Augusto Sakai to win by decision. And that's one thing I can see happening. I can see the fight gets slow. We have a lot of like back and forth close moments. Here goes Sakai is, you know, look, Sakai is fighting for his career in the UFC. He's got a lot to fight for. If we go 1-1 one, one into round three, it comes down to a moment or two. We get a full decision here. Sakai at plus 450 by decision. I kind of like that spot too. I know I mentioned a bunch of props. <laughs> I'm not sure which ones we're going to play just yet. Tune in for our full plays later in the week. You get a profile on betm.tips. Also, our bets will be up on Twitter. For now, I'm going to choose Sergey Spivak to win the fight. Money line is around 260. Probably moves a little bit towards closer towards minus 300 some people will argue it's a safe parlay piece it's a heavyweight bout there's nothing safe about this i'm on speedbox to win that's your breakdown if you didn't do so already what are you waiting for please like and subscribe and we're on to the next video deuces